they got up and came in while the rest of the world was at home, sometimes 20 or 30 days straight. Kerry, you are CEO here in Akron of Gojo, the inventors, the makers of Purell and so many other products. You stepped into the role in January of 2020, three months before the world blew up and you had an infinite demand for your product, which most companies can never say, but you had to lead through that. Can you tell us about that? Sure. So, uh, you know, I had been uh, COO before that, so at least I wasn't brand new. Uh, and I had been around the business for about six years at that time. And uh, still, nothing prepares you to be in the seat like being in the seat. And so uh, literally, I, I started in my new role January 1st. Uh, within days of uh, becoming CEO, we got word through uh, this detect and alert team that we have at Gojo that runs all the time in the background. A few weeks later, um, things really started to get serious. Overnight, uh, we saw a 10x increase in orders for our bottled products. And so we pulled a team together, uh, as we do here when there's a challenge, uh, to talk about what we should do. It was a crazy time. We knew that once we got behind, we'd never catch up. Uh, we understood that with the kind of market position we have in healthcare, that meant that there would be dispensers that didn't get filled. There would be doctors and nurses and other healthcare workers on the front lines who didn't have the products they needed to do their job safely. And so while there wasn't immediate consensus, Pretty quickly, um, I was able to use a good consul consultative process to decide that we would, in fact, ramp up at 100 percent and deal with the consequences if, if the surge didn't materialize. Throughout the pandemic, what was the thing that you were most proud of, you personally? The thing I was most proud of was um, that our team members got up every single day, sometimes 20 or 30 days straight without a day off. They came in on the highway which was close. There was nobody else on it, right? No cars, no people. They got up and came in while the rest of the world was at home. They had kids who were doing online learning who they had to leave at home with a trusted aunt or granny, you know, to sit and do their online learning so they could come in and show up and live our purpose. And uh, I, I just, I can't believe the way that our team responded. In past surges, uh, when we were responding to the incredible increase in demand in H1N or in SARS, we actually had paused a lot of the innovation that was happening. And so this time, as a learning organization, we talked about that early and we said, we're not going to do that. We're going to make sure that we continue the drumbeat of our innovation and keep our pipeline going even through this crisis. And as a result, coming out of the pandemic, we actually had a very robust pipeline uh, at a time when the world is much more attuned to health and hygiene than it was before the pandemic. We have some really exciting new product launches. For example, uh, our new dispenser just launched in December. It's called the 10 Series Dispenser. Back there. It's back there. <laughs> Blurry in the shot, it's, I think it's back there. It's stunningly beautiful. But not only is it a gorgeous dispenser, uh, much more importantly, it has some really um, powerful features. So uh, the first is that uh, it generates a lot less less waste. We were able to take about 30 percent of the plastic out of the system through both the dispenser and the refills. And so it's much more environmentally friendly in that way. It also has formulations that are more environmentally friendly. The second big uh, benefit that our new dispensing system delivers is uh, less maintenance. And we all know that right now facilities are really struggling with labor. And uh, we were able to invent a, a new, syst a new uh, technology where there's a battery on the refill. We call it energy on the refill. And so every time you change the refill in the dispenser, it brings its own energy source, which is sufficient to dispense the whole refill. And so you never have to worry about changing batteries in a dispenser again. And, it, you know, a typical health system might have 50 or 80,000 dispensers. So you think about the improvement that that makes in their operations from a labor efficiency standpoint. I mean, it's everything that we talk about in the advancement of manufacturing, too. It's connected products. It's sending information. It's, a, it's our first dispenser that comes with a um, embedded IoT solution right out of the box. Uh, you can download our app from the App Store. And uh, you can set up your dispenser or fleet of dispensers on your phone. 
And uh, the dispensers will actually tell you when they need refills. People don't think often of this when they think of manufacturing. They think of, oh, Gojo, maybe soap, maybe Purell. They don't think of technology first. But very much it's integrated not just in your products at this point, but also in your factories in a very big way. How do you think of technology innovation generally, be it in the product or the shop? We never think about uh, technology for the sake of technology, even though we're nerdy and we love it. Uh, in our business, technology is always about doing a job better. And so that's true in our products. So when we develop our products, we use technology if the technology allows that product to do the job it's doing even better for the person who's hiring it for that job. And we think of technology the very same way in our plants. So if there's a job, for example, a job that is um, taking a high labor content, is very repeatable, um, would be a bottleneck if we had to scale rapidly, uh, and frankly is work that the people who are doing it aren't um, learning and growing in because it's so repetitive. That's a perfect example of a place where we, we like to use technology, uh, automation, robotics, to, to do that work so that we can free the humans up to do work that only humans can do, which tends to be work that's more variable, that requires more agility and adaptability, um, work that is uh, about managing a lot of the automation and the robots rather than doing the, the repetitive tasks. In many ways, you and I are also new leadership for, at least generationally, for manufacturing. How do you see that playing out over the next decades? You know, I think that there has been a really healthy generational transition in Northeast Ohio. Um, I was recently at a dinner that was a small dinner of female CEOs in town. It actually wasn't that small. You know, we there was a, a pretty nice full table. Uh, it included, uh, you know, Heidi Petz, the new CEO at Sherwin-Williams. Uh, it included Rebecca from Lubrizol. Uh, you know, it was really a robust set of CEOs who have come into manufacturing in this in this in this space. And all of us are energized and excited about being here. I was talking to Scott Mueller, founder of Dealer Tire, the other day, uh, and it reminded me of a quote that you had put out there when you were working at Dealer Tire uh, about your daughters. I have three daughters. And your, your quote was something akin to they all want to sell tires now for their living because, you know, you brought that passion into it. And it was such a cool environment. And I can tell you, I'm planning for three weeks from now, my daughters, all three of them, their birthdays at Magnet, where they're ex explicitly asking for, oh, can we use the robot? Can we play with the robot dog? How do we get more, particularly women, but how do we get more folks like our daughters to be inspired by what it is that manufacturing brings out to the world? Yeah, I love that your, you know, your girls and other kids are spending time at Magnet. It's all about that exposure early and saying, this is for you. You can do this. And I think there's a real myth that uh, there aren't a lot of women in manufacturing. I mean, if you come walk the floors of our plants, uh, you will see many, many, many women working on the line as, as production leaders, as engineers in quality, in CNS. I mean, we have a tremendous, tremendous pool of female talent. And part of our job in all of these manufacturing industries is to continue to provide the kind of development planning and coaching so that people can keep moving up in their careers and achieve the kinds of leadership roles that I think we bemoan not having enough women in. And you've talked about leadership. You've talked about innovation, digital technologies. You've talked about talent. We want to lead here in smart manufacturing. Do you think that we as a region, Northeast Ohio, can? I don't see any reason why Northeast Ohio can't be a leader or the leader in smart manufacturing. Uh, my experience has been that at each stage where we needed to bring in new and different expertise, where we wanted to try something that we hadn't done before, um, in Northeast Ohio, we've been able to find the talent. Uh, we've been able to find the partners. We've been able to find the resources to stand that up here. That has Sure, we have a legacy, a heritage in more traditional manufacturing. The people are people who are problem solving. They're people who work hard. They're people who work together, who are collaborative. And so this is a place where it makes total sense we would lead on the next front, just as we did all those years in the past. What do you think holds us back or what do you think the hurdles we have to overcome as a region are? I think our single biggest challenge here is our self-esteem. It's crazy. When I moved back to Cleveland, I grew up here. When I moved back here, the number of people who asked me why I'd moved back was staggering. I actually wrote an editorial to The Plain Dealer in my, I was like 30, 
about how we all just needed to to get some swagger. You know, this is an incredible place. It was a place I chose. I lived in London and Amsterdam and Boston, and I chose to come here with my husband because we believed this was the best place to grow both our careers and our family. And I just think we need to get that swagger. We have all the resources we need to be successful. We have incredible universities that attract all kinds of great students and then graduate incredible PhDs and doctors and uh, all kinds of different professionals who can support industry. Um, we have a heritage uh, in imaging. We have a heritage in chemistry. We have all this incredible raw material. It just takes having the confidence and the vision to do something with it. <laughs> 